Go for it. <laughs> there we go. Well, let's and then, live. Actually, it, yep, might it looks like it's live. live. Hi. Okay. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> okay, there we go. So um, today I'm on here live with Yen Verhoeven. Am I saying it correctly? I've never pronounced yep. it out loud. Yep, okay. you've got it. <laughs> so Yen is a member of the group. And she also has her own uh, Facebook group called Rebels Teaching Steam, correct? Mm -hmm. Rebels yep. Teaching Elementary Steam. Yeah, thank you. It changed uh, from here to there, like in the last few years. So I did. You're right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, do so you want to tell us a little bit about what you do, Yen, and why you're here today? Yeah, sure. So, um, I am a learning theorist, a STEAM educator, and I do a variety of other things, including um, I am a certified instructional designer and program evaluator. And so one of the things I really enjoy is helping teachers um, with teaching methodology to make the learning stronger, but also with designing instructional environments that help facilitate learning so that it's easier like for people to learn but also for teachers to like have that structure so that it's efficient it saves you time and all of that great stuff that we want right because mm -hmm. there's just not enough time in the world so yeah, yeah. teaching um, is hard so anything that makes it easier Exactly, exactly. And um, my company, Key Learning Research Group, is primarily focused on supporting elementary teachers with teaching STEAM, but also with teaching in a transcurricular way so that kids really get um, the kinds of problem solving 21st century skills that they're going to need for like any future environment, anything that they they're going to encounter, right? And so we're very much about um, revolutionizing education, changing how we see it, changing how we approach it, so that it empowers everyone in the system. Mm -hmm. That's so, yeah, just a little goal. <laughs> a little, yeah. It's it's a very small goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, that's um, awesome. I mean, I've watched you from afar just build your business and your group and you know it's really really grown a lot in the last few years thank you yeah it has we've come a really long way um you know let's see march 27th i just celebrated my third year anniversary of getting my phd and during that same year like within a month um april 5th in fact i started key learning research group and it's just been like a whirlwind roller coaster since then. But I just have to share, especially for those of you who are still trying to figure out where your niche is, what, what business model you want to follow and all of those things. It probably took us almost two years before we found our voice and identity. Mm -hmm. And we're still continually trying to get better at it, trying to, you know, take the things that are up here to be mm -hmm. able to say it in a way that connects with people. And that's been it's a lot of work, <laughs> but you know, just like what yeah. you had said before, Lisa, we moved from starting with steam cafe, which was, you know, really generic. It didn't really speak to what we offer. Mm -hmm. And um, really, I guess I would say wore our true colors, which is about rebel teaching, being rebels. Our flagship program, which starts in July, I'm super excited about that, is um, a year-long mentoring program called the Fierce and Fearless STEAM Teacher. So wow. we use that language because it's really about empowering our teachers, because when empowered teachers take on the classroom and take on teaching in general everywhere, mm -hmm. we empower our students. Yeah. So. That is so cool. All right. Thank you. So Yen's going to show us the back end of her Member Vault account because she recommended it. And I like the community so much for Member Vault because we're starting a membership. Um, she recommended it, and that's where we're going with it. And she saw my plea for help in the Member Vault community um, for some help. So she's going to show us the back end of her Member Vault, which hopefully will help other people who are thinking about you know, starting a membership or having online courses or anything. Yeah. And the thing I like about Member Vault, there's a couple of reasons why I recommend Member Vault for people who are starting out. One is it's free for, I think, like the first thousand subscribers. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. So you mm -hmm. can put things on there and test it out and see how well it does, see who's using your stuff, all of those things. 
The other thing too, and this is one thing like lessons learned, right? Lessons learned. Um, one of the big lessons is if you're going into a platform, do not succumb to the temptation of buying a year's subscription. Mm-hmm. We made that mistake the first couple of years. And what I found is sometimes you get to stages where you grow so fast, mm-hmm. you outgrow these systems and all of a sudden all that money you just thought you saved is thrown away. It's better mm-hmm. to do month to month until you're like, yeah, I really like it. And then go for the big dive, right? Mm-hmm. Um the nice thing about member vault, you don't really have that because it starts out free. The other mm-hmm. thing too is, you know, just like what Lisa said, it's got a really good supportive community. The, the company itself was created by a husband and wife team. The husband is the programmer and he created that platform. So they're very pro entrepreneur. They're very mm-hmm. pro like um, female entrepreneur and supporting mm-hmm. female entrepreneurs. It's just got a lot of really good values and they're so responsive. Mm-hmm. They're really about, you know, creating a product that that is um, going to help serve their community. So, yeah. um, and the other added thing about that is if you have an EDU email, um, you know, and again, this is how responsive they are. I sent them an email a while back saying, hey, I might be sending some teacher entrepreneurs your way. Is there any way you could give us a discount? Because some of them might be using it for class, distance learning, all that stuff. They said, yeah, like they responded within a day and they said, yes, we will give teachers a 50% educational discount, which is kind of cool. Um, I also have an, yeah, and I have an affiliate link so I can share that with you, but You know, what I like about it is you can try it out. The other thing I like about Member Vault is that it's easy to set up. Like in comparison with other systems, yeah. once you understand how things are organized, mm-hmm. it's pretty quick. Like I've been able to put together a course in a weekend, which is like, that's actually reasonably fast considering mm-hmm. I've had you know, like 15 years of experience doing this, Mm -hmm. a weekend is pretty fast. And I'm saying that because oftentimes you may not realize when you do a course, how long it can take. Um, And a lot of that time is involved in trial and error, technical pieces and organization. So just letting you know, it does take an inordinate amount of time. It took us two months to make our first course when we first started out. Two months of planning and two people on it full-time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just giving you some perspective because it's important. I think as entrepreneurs, we have to, uh, you know, normalize the hard stuff and that's really hard. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd share. (laughs) So let me, you know, um, at least I'm sorry. I keep talking. Go ahead. Is there anything you want to say? I want you to talk. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) yeah. If you're ready to share your screen, that would be great. Um, if you want to show us what it looks like, I think that's great advice to, you know, maybe do the month to month first before you go to a year because you just don't know till you put it out there what's going to happen. So I, I think that's great advice. And I mean, I, that was one of the reasons why I chose it too, is that it's free for a little while before you figure out where you're going with it. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other one, if you're looking for um, a mailing, like, you know, um, auto mailers and stuff like that, like uh, a yeah. What do you call it? Client. What's that? MailChimp. Like MailChimp. Yeah. See, I'm not a fan of MailChimp. And I'll tell you why. Their customer service is horrible. So Mm. oftentimes I find um, platforms that offer good customer service. Like Mm. that's so important. So, um, you know, active campaign is what I would advise for people starting out. Um, The reason why is, again, it's very low cost when you start. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of support out there. You actually can get a one-on-one sign-on session so um, for free. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a really good perk. Um, And it also integrates really well with other systems. So um, let me show you what the front end looks like. And the way I describe it is when you're designing instruction, there's a front end and a back end, right? So let me show you the front end first. And what I like to start with is one reason why Member Vault is a little different than most of the kinds of online systems that you normally see. Um, they have, so what, can you, every, can you see my screen, Lisa? I can. Yep. Okay, great. So this is like the real front end and this is called the marketplace. And one of the features of Member Vault that I like is the marketplace is really the place where you sell your wares. 
So you can see some of the available products that we have um, in our marketplace. Okay, um, and you'll see there's courses, there's library, which I like, um, and, and a message of, you know, hey, welcome, and so on. So this is all customizable. What I like about this is if somebody comes into your course, like through, I don't know, out school or somewhere else, mm -hmm. and you give them this marketplace like link, they can yeah. come and go like, oh yeah, you have this. Oh, and you have this too. Oh, and this looks really cool, right? And that's what you want. It's just a, it's a shopping experience. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right? Okay. So yeah, they call it the binge and buy marketplace. The binge and buy marketplace. And that's yeah. what this is about, right? It's like little snippets of things. And what they advise is one is like a freebie kind of thing. And so our distance learning toolkit is actually free. Um, okay. And then uh, in here, you can see, you know, you can get learn more and you'll see how it's set up. So when somebody comes in to learn more, this is like what your actual course looks like. So, um, and I'm going to show, actually, let me back up and tell you about organizing. My Facebook group is, um, it's actually for any teacher that's teaching kids in elementary mm -hmm. level. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. I like to do is, like I said, I'm a learning theorist. And so for me, I, you know, our, our real, I guess, secret sauce is that we show teachers methodologies to help make that learning so much easier rather than, you know, fighting against trying to get kids to memorize and think and, and do these things that are so difficult for them. We show teachers ways of doing it easily so that, you know, it just starts with what I call a learning cue. Um, and once you get them to, you know, get, get their curiosity hooked and their interest hooked, it just flows. Now, art, yeah. and the reason why we call it STEAM and not STEM, mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. art is so important in engaging your students. And so many of the techniques that, you know, art teachers use are kind of the techniques that we try and teach our teachers to use, because it's just such a natural segue into learning. So, you know, um, and so it's just beautiful that way. But yes, we would love to have you join because one of the things that makes our group so unique is that we have diverse voices at the table. Um, you know, it's not just, you know, STEM teachers, it's not just science teachers. It's just, and it's not even just teachers, it's after school people, it's librarians, it's, you know, um, a, a curriculum creators and, and retirees and all kinds of folks in there that are just about like good learning. So yeah. um, yes, yeah. please check it out. We would love to have you. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. And like I said, the other thing I really like to do is talk about instructional design. So um, this is one of my really great passions is helping people figure out how do you create a course online because um, it takes a lot of skill. And, and it's funny because I have um, an online instructional design certification. Mm -hmm. Never thought when I started this company that it was something people needed. Uh -huh. And then the pandemic hit. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. why we have things like the distance learning toolkit and things like that, because it's for any instructor who wants to just take the things that they do in person and bring them to an online setting. Because as you've probably noticed, um, you can engage people at a very different level. You can engage people no matter where they live, no matter what time zone they're in. That's kind of the really great appeal for going online. So um, just need some more water. Yeah. I wanna give you a quick orientation as to how almost any of these online platforms are organized. Can you read this okay? Books, parts, and chapters. Great. Okay. So when you're designing a course and when you're looking at Member Ball or any of these things, you have to organize your content in terms of these three parts. So the book part is like the course. Okay. So mm -hmm. in Member Ball, it's also called the product name. So I'm going to just say, you know, this is your course, the thing you want to teach. Um, in Member Vault, I'm just, you know, having you think about organization. Mm -hmm. This is your product. Okay, can yep. you see that? Okay, I just worry about it. I, I can see it. Yeah, it's a little okay, bit lighter, good. but it's okay. Okay, hopefully, hopefully. All right. If not, I can like throw up the zoom and you know figure that piece out. So just let me know. Okay, so course product, 
And then just like a book, you've got books that are organized into parts, right? Sometimes they're big parts. Usually they're like, you know, maybe two to four different parts. Some books don't have them. Mm -hmm. um, and Member Vault will account for that too. But for the most part, these parts are helpful. So for example, like um, even this talk, you know, with Lisa, I organized it into parts. Like the big thing we wanted to talk about is like an introduction to Member Vault, right? But I have three parts to it. I have the you know front and back end of member vault and walking you through that the second part is i'm going to share some tips that's probably going to save you tons of time mm -hmm. and then i'm going to share with you other platforms like as you start to advance because there's pluses and minuses to all of them and it's just kind of a good way to see like when you're going to an online course and you're trying to figure out how it's organized um you know it this this piece right here is going to help you with that orientation yeah. So, of course, okay, so the parts, right, in Member Vault. So, if we think about parts, these are like our units mm -hmm. in a class, okay? Mm -hmm. The big major parts, right? They're units. Now, in Member Vault, these are called modules. Mm -hmm. So, you've got your course, your units, which are your modules. And then, of course, this is why I needed my wireless ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hang on. These are your lessons. Okay, so mm -hmm. those are your small ones. Now in Member Vault, they're also called lessons. So it's easy. Yeah. Now in Member Vault, you, you don't only have lessons, but you have three parts. You've got your lesson, but then within the lesson, you have three things. You have text, homework, and files, okay? So mm -hmm. those, those are kind of how that's organized. It helps to give you a bird's eye view because when you're designing your course, you may wanna lay these things out first before you do it on Member Vault because Member Vault, the technology is gonna throw you off, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And that's always the case. It gets really messy and muddly first, right? Before you can actually, you know, um, get things down. So, yeah. um, so what you're going to see in the back end is the marketplace holds all of our courses, right? Mm -hmm. And then what I just clicked on right here, let me just share screen again. What I just clicked on here is what the class looks like. So this is the class, your, you know, so-and-so quote unquote class, your um, teacher's distance learning toolkit. And then you see the modules, those are those units, right? So here it's mm -hmm. 10 modules and you'll see like tips, distance learning plan template. There's a bunch of other things. And notice some of these are locked. Yeah. One of the things that you can do is you can lock them until like somebody, if somebody, like you can run contests on Member Vault. I'm not gonna get into it, but mm -hmm. like if you want people to, you know, engage in certain amounts of things or answer questions and stuff like that, you can have them unlock different things. So it's, it's totally gamified. So mm -hmm. yeah, which is another draw, I think the gamification and then also that you can see people's progress as they go through all your modules and the lessons. I think that's big too. So, you know, like how long they watch the video, like where does engagement drop off? So you can kind of problem solve once you get everything up there and you see how they interact with it. Yeah. And there's two ways to do that too. Like one of the things, if you're thinking about hosting video, I actually like hosting video on a combination of YouTube and Screencast. Most okay. people don't know Screencast as much, but my video editing software is Camtasia and Camtasia mm -hmm. um, is owned by TechSmith, which also owns Screencast and TechSmith assets and things like that. Mm -hmm. The advantage to Screencast and using things on Camtasia is that the videos automatically get broken down into chapters as well. So wow. people can skip to where they wanna go. So there's, again, it's just a weird quirk of mine. What I like about YouTube, just like you said, Lisa, also is you can get that data too. Where are people dropping off? It's free, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's just some mm -hmm. good things about it, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is like, if somebody comes in and they wanna learn about it, but they haven't bought it yet, right? Then mm -hmm. this is like the big sales page you, you can think of yeah. with the general description. And so you can see, you know, 
got the buttons I'm talking about and then get my toolkit, all those things. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you buy it, then it looks like this. Now notice that this has changed because it's like they already bought the toolkit. Mm -hmm. So on here, it's kind of a welcome. Now, when this is like in your book, you know, the preface, mm -hmm. first chapter, that preface of, yeah, well, you know, this is what it's about. I'm going to talk about X, Y, and Z in this chapter, you got this in this chapter, you got this and so on. What I highly recommend is always having an introduction that tells you where you can get started, you know, that says a little bit about you, how to contact you and things, because one of the things that um, people uh, have to pay special, special attention to when they're online is signposting. Um, because remember, in some ways, this is like, this is like taking somebody and dropping them in the middle of a forest, and you're the only one who has the map. Mm. And the first thing they have to see when you drop them in the forest is the map, like right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, right. if there's no map and they're looking around and they mm. don't know where to start, you've lost mm. them like yep. that. Yep. So the map is super important, but also your friendly face to say, if you need help, you know, here's how you get me. Right. So those are yep. things that, you know, we have. So, you know, you can see this here. You can reach out to me at yenakeylearning.com. Yep. If you're looking to find like, you know, wording and stuff like that, feel free to go ahead and grab the distance learning toolkit and just take from this. I do not mind that at all. And just adjust it to what you need. Totally okay with that. Just don't start your own distance learning toolkit with my stuff. <laughs> right, right. But I doubt you would do that. But you know, you can use this as like a boilerplate to help you yeah. with, with your own things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So remember, this is like the book. This is the intro to the book. Here are my different parts. So I've got 10 parts to this. Yeah. I'm going to show you this part, which is you see how it says view the module, right? Like units module. Okay. So when you view the module, Oh, it's kind of buggy when you do it this way. So let me, um, cause I'm in preview. The, yeah. Okay, so the other thing is, so let me show you the, let me see. Okay, here's, here's the module. Yeah, I'm gonna show you this first so that you can see what it looks like on the outside. All right, this is when you go into the module, you'll see it's labeled here as a module, right? So you've got your course, your module. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice there's different ways you can organize a member vault. I'll show you in the back end. Lisa, to your question that you had asked in member vault, because it still sticks. Um, this is probably what you were asking for, right? With the different videos. Yes, I wanted to know if I could, because we're doing lessons that, you know, we're recording them in shorter chunks just because it's easier to upload. Yep. And I could not figure out how to get a second video in there. Which, and I was thinking, how are we supposed to do this? How are we supposed to have four videos? So this, yeah, this is exactly. And, and someone in there was nice enough to tell me how to do that. There was like a little thing I would not have seen on my own, most likely. <laughs> and that's when you said that I'm like, okay. You know, because there's like little things that we yeah. figure out and just, you know, to help people save time. So I'll show you how to do that too. Well, yeah others how to do that here but yeah. you can see there because and i'll show you in the back end in a second but usually there's one place for the video mm -hmm. this is like it's a code it's an embed code that you put in yeah. to have those different things so that's right here so that's why i wanted to pull this lesson up in particular now the nice thing too is you'll notice mm -hmm. under each lesson is also what your other available products are so yeah. people can see that and i like that part yeah. Um, you know, so it's really nice. Okay. So we've got tips, tools, tutorials. Okay. Here's the nine lessons, right? And then here's what Lisa was talking about in terms of completion. Like, you know, I, when I take this lesson, let's see if it'll come up in preview. Yes. When I take this lesson, now I'm on online lesson one and you can see the lessons up here. Here's the video for it. And then here's the text that I was talking about. Here's the homework or lesson activity. Mm -hmm. And then you can also have questions there as people follow along. One tip that I have, especially if you're an entrepreneur, is a question like this. What suggestions or questions do you have so we can improve? Um, this is how you can get like feedback from your audience 
because then that, you know, helps you or things like, what did you find was most useful about this? What did you find was least useful? In right. the module, you can even have a question like, um, what, what is one of your personal goals by taking this course? So a lot of those things are like ways you can do um, passive customer discovery um, that can get at like the different mm. kinds of words and terms that you're trying to use. Mm. So just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I like that. And Never heard you, that term before, passive customer discovery. I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. But, you know, it makes sense, right? Because, because yeah. here's the thing, when you, when you design these lessons, you can actually set a requirement that they have to complete the question before they can go to the next lesson. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got, and I do, I think it's a great opportunity to get that input. And the nice thing about having it in writing mm -hmm. is then when you're creating your sales copy, like an ad, mm -hmm. you can pull up what they say and then highlight the words and terms they're using and then yeah. put it into your ad. Mm -hmm. That's been incredibly powerful. So yeah. And you're not like asking people, you're not in your, their face. You're just like, well, I need that input so I can make the next thing for you. I mean, it's just a good customer experience that you're asking for their input. It shows that you care and you're also getting that information to help you with next word to differentiate it or yeah. Yeah. And Likert scales are also useful sometimes. So for instance, you can have like on a scale and this will do it too. On a scale of one to five, one being not very likely, five being most likely, yeah. how likely are you to use this lesson, right? And then the next follow-up question could be, um, you know, if you're going to use this lesson, how will you use it? Like, those are really good questions to, to hear and listen to how they use it, because then when you're writing the lesson, you can be like, oh yeah, and you can pop it into here for this, and you can pop it into here for that, right? So um, they can give you a lot of ideas and inspiration too, which is actually how we created the distance learning toolkit. Um, that's the other thing. If you have a Facebook group, although public now has changed, so a public group is completely different than private. Yeah. If your group is private, mm -hmm. you want to have a question that says something like, you know, what is like your biggest challenge in mm -hmm. teaching art? Or mm -hmm. what is, you know, what is it that you would like to find out when you join the group? And mm -hmm. those questions. And then have another question of, would you like to join my mailing list? Mm -hmm. If so, please leave your email. Like we've gotten, yeah. we've grown our mailing list a lot by doing something like that. Mm -hmm. So, and that's very important having an, an email list. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, Janelle had a question. She said, what if your audience is young? So that speaks directly to what we're going to do because we're doing an art club for kids who are seven to 12. So mm -hmm. we kind of have like two segments. We have the adults we have to market to, then we're sort of marketing to the kids. And then we have to get the, I have to let my cat out of the room. Hold on. No problem. More pet problems. She's digging <laughs> at my door. Oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, so we have to, so it's kind of like we're marketing to the parents on the sales page and our landing page. But then once they get in here, it's really going to be more for the kids, I think. So any tips yeah. for that? For yes. For audiences young? Yes. So for member vault, this is what I would do. So let me show you the back end real quick. Okay. Cause I can show you. So you see where this text is right here. Yeah. What you can do is you can say for parents, you always want to have a little bit for parents to show them what, you know, you, you're expecting your, your young child to do. Okay. Yeah. Because it's just a little bit of guidance because you're not really there sometimes, especially if this is a course where it's like self-driven yeah. like an evergreen course, which are really good, by the way, evergreen courses are great passive income. Once you put it in, because mm -hmm. you don't have to be there once you've created it. So, but they take more signposting at the beginning. So you just have to say like here for parents, right. And then in your introduction, it would be like our, our modules are divided into two parts lessons for you. And then the actual student lesson. So this mm -hmm. would be for parent. And then here under lesson activity, this would be maybe what students want to do or okay. vice versa. It could be like, here's your video for your students. Here's what you want them to do, you know, yeah. or say, and then under here, you can say, okay, for parents and add that instruction in. So either way, but you can have two distinct like levels that way. So it, you know, can kind of, kind of help with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and let me know if, if you had other questions about that too. Uh, okay. I'd be more than happy to help. Okay, so here's the back end. When you log in and you create your account, you're gonna see activity products, users, affiliates, because you can have affiliates. Um, one thing I like about Member Vault is it's really easy to have affiliate people. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you create a separate like course and it's got you know the stuff for them to sign up. Yeah, um, someone, um, we, we bought a course, someone who is, uh, you know, tells you how to set up your membership. And one of the things she recommends, one of the modules is to have a VIP ambassador area so that people can take your information and give it to their friends and then they would get something in return, maybe a free month or whatever. Yeah. Yep. And that's, that's where you set up affiliates mm -hmm. and then you've got actions, appearance, and so on. Um, integrations. That's why I recommend active campaign because it's yeah. actually really easy to hook those up on member vault. And if you ever need help, you can always email tech support or go into Facebook. The Facebook group for member vault is I think it's pretty amazing. So yeah, it is really good. So what you see is there's different types of courses that you can set. Regular is if I buy the course, all the lessons are laid out. They're just right there. Progressive, you notice, because this is like a 10 day challenge, right? So progressive is each day, one of these things opens. That's one way to do it. It's called a drip. Yeah. So you drip new content each day, or you can have it where when they finish that quiz question, then it opens up the next module. Do that quiz question, it opens up the next module. For young kids, um, I think doing, it depends on how you, if you have a course that you're building stuff on top of, then definitely the progressive model will work. If it's something where, you know, it's like, you know, here's one module for this art project and here's one module for this one or so on, and you want kids to have a choice, then you may want it to be regular. So either way. Okay, yeah. now when you go into edit, Here's where you set everything up. So this is your product information. This is the description, the welcome message. And then this is that teaser, you know, the sales page, it's on okay. this side. Okay. And then mm -hmm. terms of service, um, you know, I like making things fun. So that's why I add little quips and things like that, just because, you know, it lets people know that, yeah, there's actually a human behind this, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. So um, okay, so you've got that. Here's the module names. So you set up your modules this way. And then when you go into the modules, here's where, you know, that module outline is, you know, it's sort of like part one, and then there's like a little excerpt, and then you open it and there's the first chapter, right? So yeah. here's your excerpt. And then here's your lessons. So when I go into a lesson, there's two ways to do it. So one is, as you notice, you can put your video type here and you have your lesson. Here's that lesson text I was talking about. Remember I said three parts, right? Mm -hmm. The homework. And yep. notice one of the things also I wanna share is I hyperlink a lot. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is hyperlinking helps minimize cognitive load. One of the big factors you always are fighting when it comes to doing an online course is cognitive load. And cognitive load, you know, I mean, we're all teachers. So, you know, it's like that, that point where there's so much we can't process anymore. Mm -hmm. And the cognitive load that always happens with an online course, especially if they're not familiar with the platform is the technology piece. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're having people navigate too many times to different things, the more numbers of clicks you have them do, the more mm -hmm. cognitive load you're piling on. Because for them, it's like a maze. And so it's, you know, again, how do you, you know, how do you navigate a maze? Well, you have maps everywhere. Mm -hmm. So these links are those maps. My highlights are like, what do you want to really see and stand out? Spacing is really important, you know, and yeah. And yeah, so breaking it down into little chunks. Yeah, but um, the hyperlinks, one tip with the hyperlinks is when you create a hyperlink, you'll notice it, it defaults to current window. Mm -hmm. You almost always want it to default to new window. So there's another tip, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reason why is so that they don't have to go back to you. They can just go to the tab and they're not losing both at the same time, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one other thing, okay.
So you've got your lesson text, you've got your lesson activities. If you leave this blank, only the lesson text will show. Okay. So that's the other thing. Um, and then notice here is where you upload your files. Now there's two ways to do it. You can either upload your files or what I actually prefer is to hyperlink them directly. And I, I use Box as a file share. Yeah. Um, you can use Google Doc. The reason why I don't like using this place where you upload is because if I want to update something, I have to find everywhere that that file has been uploaded and have to re-upload. And that is a royal, royal pain. So if yeah. I, you, right, so if I use Box, I have my uploads in one area and Box will automatically, you know, update the file. So I update yep. the file in Box, mm -hmm. which means anywhere it's hyperlinked, they're just going to get the newest version. Like that's, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's good, that's good. Like that's a hot tip, I think, you know, because yeah. it, it's going to save you time because you probably saw you know, like our marketplace, um, we just got, we've got a lot of stuff, you we know? Um, yeah. And so it's just, yeah, you, you don't wanna, you don't wanna have to navigate all of it. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's why the hyperlinking helps. And then here's your quiz questions, mm -hmm. you know, with the answers and it, those can be downloaded and so on. Okay, yeah. so I talked about file share, I talked about outline. You also wanna be consistent. So this is why it may help. Now, here's the thing. When I plan out a course online, um, I use boards like this to outline my modules. So, so one of these might be a module, one of these might be a lesson. I use whiteboards and I use post-its. Mm -hmm. Like I will spread out on a total table because, so I wanted to share this. Actually, let me pause. Any questions? I'm sorry, I keep going on. I don't because... see any questions there. The last one was Janelle's and um, Anita wanted to know if it's gonna be recorded. So yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're and gonna record you, it. And ask away, ask away if, if you have any questions on any of this stuff. Um, Lisa, anything I missed or any questions that you have? No, this is really helpful. I think I really like the tip about the hyperlink because I we were adding files, but I think that's really smart. And um I wasn't I mean, we haven't been in there that long, so a lot of stuff I haven't been utilizing. I hadn't really thought about using the quizzes as a way to ask for suggestions, how you can improve. So that's good too. I'll, I'll add that to everything that we have. And yeah. You me now before I add 20 things and then I have to go in and <laughs> update it. So <laughs> like I said, this is like, it, it's like, a, you know, if you build it once, it's going to save you all that time later. Yeah. That's why when I saw you in member ball, I'm like, oh I, yeah, I probably should help her out because you know, it's stuff that, that, you know, okay. So Here's, um, let me go back. All right. So if I go to tips, tools, and tutorials, um, where was it? Okay. So you see how I have these multiple videos under mm -hmm. description. Yeah. All right. This is how you do it. There are two things that, um, you remember I said front end and back end. There's mm -hmm. also the text end and the coding end. Yeah. You know, and the computer code is where you actually can embed these videos. There's actually two ways to do it. So one is if I put a, my cursor anywhere here, mm -hmm. I can embed a video this way, as yeah. you can see. Okay. Mm -hmm. The way I like doing it, and the only reason why is I have more control, mm -hmm. is I'll put the cursor where I want it, and then I go into the code. Yeah. Um, it is not as intimidating as a lot of people think. The way I do it to orient myself is I look at what the words are and that'll tell me where I am, yeah. okay? Um, but you see how it says the first video is here. This is your embed code right here, okay? Mm -hmm. And the way you do it is, let me see if I can go into YouTube really quick. It, it's like doing a blog post on WordPress. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it looks just like that. So, you know, if you go here to any one of the videos, share, and then you see embed right here, mm -hmm. that's all you're on, doing. I haven't been on your YouTube channel before. <laughs> yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Um, 
<laughs> but you can just copy this. Yeah. You can have it start at a certain time. There's different ways. And this is why I like the embed code. You know, mm -hmm. you can even change the size of the thing. And then you just copy yeah. that. And then like, I've already quickly opened so many tabs and then paste it in here um, yeah. and then save. Um, and then and then you can toggle, you know, back and forth between the two. So there's a couple ways you can do it. Like yeah. I said, if you ever get lost. So here's my other tip. If you get lost, don't spend hours on it. Ask for help. Mm -hmm. It'll be so much <laughs> less frustrating. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, the community is so good about helping, you know, helping you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So I think any other questions about member ball? I think that was like really the big things that I wanted to share, but. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we haven't gotten in there too deep. So I don't know that I have that many questions yet because I haven't, you know, used it a whole lot. We and Last week we set up the modules and the lessons and got the structure. So now we're just figuring out how to add things. And, you know, you have to figure out where you're going to store your videos. There's just so many aspects to it but yeah it, gets, it feels like a lot but it we're starting to feel a little more like okay we can handle this we've gotten over a few technology humps and forget and you know what you can also not have to worry about like the million and one lessons that we do mm -hmm. so i'm going to show you another because i wanted to share this with you so yeah. i use member vault but we're moving toward thinkific which is okay. it's $99 a month. So it costs more. But the reason why we're moving to Thinkific is because mm -hmm. I'm now, um, we have um, ties with University of Rochester and Drake University. So yeah. when teachers are taking our courses, they get certification. Mm -hmm. Thinkific will automatically issue that certificate and then let me know so that I can get the university, mm -hmm. you know, stamp on it. Mm -hmm. And that's something member vault, not as easy to track hours. Yeah, As, you know what I mean. It's just your level of control. Mm -hmm. um, it's also like Member Vault is nice because it's down and dirty. It's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great place to get your feet wet. We did. We, you know, we've been using it for almost two and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you get better at it, then you start to grow and you start to see these other systems. Mm -hmm. So Thinkific is for that. But um, what I also did is I'll show you. Um, this is Entreport. Entreport's a little more advanced. If you're going yeah. into Entreport, right? You want to well, I saw to that in, in your, I don't know where we were, in the member vault. That it, it's hosted by Entreport, is that right? Some of those things are, yeah. So Entreport, we moved from Active Campaign to Entreport because Entreport will allow us to do the whole sales funnel the emails, the customer, like um, CRM, which I forget what it stands for, but customer, you know, um, you can see who you've contacted, what your emails are, what they've opened, what they've yeah. purchased. And then it also does the web pages and the membership site. It's an all in one. It's sort of like Kajabi. Yeah. Um, but what I like is it's a little harder than Kajabi. So here's the thing. Mm. If you're not tech savvy and you want an all in one system and you have the money for it, do Kajabi. Mm -hmm. If you're yeah. about to start, and even if, even if you do have the money for it, but you're not quite like familiar with things, start with member vault because it won't cost you anything, mm -hmm. you know, like, and then because once yeah. it's organized on member vault, moving over is actually fairly quick because you mm -hmm. know how it's all organized. So I just want to yeah. say that, yep. you know, okay. So I want to okay. show you though, a quick down and dirty, say you're like, Hey, all I have is a WordPress site or all I have is a website. How do I put this down? Or I have member vault, but I don't know what the heck I'm doing. What do I do? This is what I say. Just do, um, you know, a course, a unit and a lesson, just one and you are done. And let me show you what I mean. All you have to do when it comes to a lesson is this. You can lay out the course completely on one lesson page. So this is online instructional design. I created this for the Iowa Arts Council, like in the whole state of Iowa, they take people through the state training. Yeah. And I just felt it was easier to do this than run people through so many page clicks. For mm -hmm. your kids, you may want to do something like this too, by the way, if it's simpler. Everything is on one page and all you do is you scroll down. Okay. So um, this was the live session. You don't have to have this, but you notice the modules are these squares. Mm -hmm. 
And then yeah. here's the handouts, right? Same box link. You can use yeah. the same link. Welcome yeah. video. Here's your introduction, right? Here's, you know, same thing. Here it is. Here's your orientation, additional resources. Here's how it's organized. Same thing. Like I said, signposting is always there. Mm -hmm. Contact me. Here's yeah. first module. Handouts, resources. There it is. Developing your framework. Mm -hmm. Really, really simple. Yeah, it is well laid out. And that's it. Here's the trick, consistency. So every single one of these is organized in exactly the same way. Handout, additional resources, video, description. Handout, additional resources, video, description. Mm -hmm. Handout, additional resources, video, description, and then a bonus. Yeah. So that's it. Clean, yep. simple. And then you can start branching out. But this is what I would actually suggest if you're just starting out, really. If you have never done an online instructional design, just use one lesson, one module, and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that looks really good. Um, Janelle put a question. She said, is it the same for Vimeo? So I think she was talking about embedding the videos. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, it's the same. Yep, completely the same. Every um, video hosting site that you have will have an embed like option. And yeah. that's what you would click. Um, and then you just copy the code and put it in. Um, Member Vault at the top, there's an option where you, you know, if you want to just insert the one video at the very top, there's a place for it. And you can yeah. pick whether it's from YouTube or Vimeo or someplace else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, I like, I have some technology pieces that I know. So yeah. I prefer the immersion, um, yeah. you know, but Entreport for sure is not a starting place. <laughs> if you're not that tech savvy, it's very yeah. frustrating. Um, there's a yeah. lot of features, but it's frustrating. Member mm -hmm. vault, simple, simple, simple. By the way, yep. if you ever have any questions about member vault or instructional design, um, feel free to like make a post in Lisa's group and tag me. I'd, I'd be more than happy to help. So just, yeah. That's so nice of you. You're always so generous, with, <laughs> really, with all your information and with your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, I, you know, does I, I'm not where I am now without helping others, you know, and without the help that people have given me. This is mm -hmm. just my paying it forward, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and then as you do your thing, you're paying it forward. We're all paying it forward, and that's that's the way it's supposed to be. So, yeah. um, I just want. Can I share just one more thing? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Of course, yeah. And we'll put links, you'll send me a link to your affiliate thing for Member Vault. We'll put that in the chat. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so if you're still going about your class, this is how I would organize it. Mm -hmm. So your first is the top three objectives for your course. Yep. What are the top three things that you want? Now, obviously, if you're, you're it's a more extensive course, you've got different ones, right? These top three objectives, if you're just starting, this is what's going to make up your units right here. Again, I'm being tethered. <laughs> okay, and then mm -hmm. what I suggest is go backwards. So if, you know, because a, a lot of times when I, I talk to teachers and stuff, they're like, I want to do all this great stuff and they're going to do this. I said, great, but what are your top three objectives? Like, what are the three things? If they forget everything, what are the three things they're going to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. That's your objectives. That's going to help you hone in on how you plan it out. Okay. Yeah. So once you have your top three objectives, then you want to think about, okay, this is where I break out the post-it notes. This is mm -hmm. how I plan. And mm -hmm. I think, okay, to accomplish these things, right? So this is like, I may put my objectives in like three different colors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not three different colors, one color for the, the top level. And yeah. then what I do is, okay, in order to accomplish this objective, what are the little things that they need, mm -hmm. right? And it's just a brainstorm. So, you know, like I said, and I would do the little things in a different color, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a brainstorm all over. So yeah. this is truly how I actually plan lessons. Mm -hmm because it's a little different 
like I would say when we do it in person, it's very linear, right? It's a, it's a linear process. We know how to do it. A lot of us just know. But when it comes to instructional design on in an online system, it's almost like a stepping stone path because the one thing you have to do is minimize that cognitive overload. Mm -hmm. And if you can plan it out first and signpost, it's going to just lower that so people can actually, you know, enjoy your course. So yeah. I, right. So what I do is I put these out first mm -hmm. and then once I have it all laid out on my post-its, I sequence, mm -hmm. you know, what's the first thing they need to know. I either go backwards or I go forwards and then everything mm -hmm. meets in the middle. So that's, that's what I would suggest. So then again, this is like, you know, here's your objectives. Here's your, um, you know, your, sorry, your units. And then you've got your individual modules and then you've got your individual lessons. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think what you're saying basically is to reduce the friction for people with the signposting because the friction will make them feel frustrated. So the smoother you can make it, that's going to help a lot. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. um, I think of it like a stepping stone path mm -hmm. to bridge from one place to another, yeah. you know, and we have to think about what's the first stepping stone that they have second and third, but we may not know what that is until you lay it out this way. Right. Yeah. And then once you lay it out with your post-it notes, you start moving stuff around and then that starts making sense. That's why I love doing like pads or there's a whiteboard underneath this too. Um, yeah. But, you know, it just, it, it makes it smoother because it could be like in person, you may teach it one way, but online there's so much more that goes into it, right? Like for instance, you almost always want to have some sort of orientation to the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, we're planning on doing that, doing a screencast, a little tour of what it looks like, how to do it. Yeah. I mean, I would need that. So <laughs> they're going to need it too. So yeah. And so that's, yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I've got. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I think laying out like that, I mean, I know for most art teachers, we're all very visual. So having it laid out like that really helps, I think consolidate what you're trying to do and you can move things around and that's very helpful yeah and some of you may not need to do it you know what I mean it's just like for me that's just how I think because I'm not a linear thinker um so yeah <laughs> my two cents <laughs> yeah 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 I mean it depends on the lesson too if you're doing something really complicated obviously to lay it out really helps and the other thing, like what you were saying, Lisa, I think is important. Um, when it comes to videos, the average attention span is about six minutes. Mm. And so um, in order to keep that attention, mm. you even can signpost in the video yep. or you can break it up. Like a lot of my videos in these courses are like no more than 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, there's exceptions. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, I just finished like um, a couple sessions to the STEM con that's coming up the virtual um, STEM conference. And in there, you know, we, I couldn't break up the videos. And so in there, I've got chapters where, you know, here's the 15 minute mark, here's the other one and so on so that people can actually take it in bites. Yeah, yeah. I was planning on doing that with our videos too. Some of the longer mm -hmm. projects, you know, here's where we start this part, then we started here. So they can kind of jump around and because otherwise it just gets confusing when you're going through real fast. and. Yeah, I just realized I want to share. Can I share one more tool? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. There is a free um, extension called LightShot. Mm, never heard and of that. LightShot is a screen capture where you can annotate things when you do tutorials. So let me share. And it's just, um, it's called LightShot. It comes up like you can see the little feather here. And so if I click, I don't see a little feather. Oh, no. Wait, are you seeing my screen? I see your screen. You're on the. Um... Oh, oh, right, right, right. Okay. So let me just, let's see if you can see this. Can you see that it, it faded? Yes. All right. And I can see a toolbar. I okay. See the feather now. Yeah. Now you see the feather. Mm -hmm. So it's light shot screenshot. Okay. Yeah. What it does is when you use light shot, you click it, you do, you take your screenshot, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yep. Here's what I like. You can annotate, mm -hmm. you can circles, squares, dots, text, 
You can save it, yeah. copy it, or print it. Oh, yeah, that's really good. So what I like is doing, when I'm doing like a, a visual tutorial, I do things like this, mm -hmm. right? And then I might add an arrow like that. Yeah. Now, all those things help. Click they really here. do. Right, like I can do, um, right? Mm-hmm. And then you just save it and then you can put it into your, um, you can put it into your uh, a member vault, right? Like you can just directly stick those in under your yeah. directions. Mm -hmm. If you're doing like that orientation, this is one thing I also like to do is to do an orientation where you just do screenshots this way mm -hmm. and then people can scroll down through. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and like I said, you can copy and do all that. So yeah, get out of there. But Lightshot is free. Um, and it's just, it's a great little handy tool. You can even do it in um, Facebook. So for instance, if I do a light shot and I can annotate different things, I just copy it. Mm -hmm. And then I can just paste it directly in my comments in Facebook. Mm. Yeah. So super that's awesome. handy. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good one to know about. I'm using Snip and Sketch, which is terrible on the PC. Oh, that no. looks a lot easier to use. I, yeah, I've used it for years, um, you know, just creating tutorials and things like that. And I, I like it. Um, there's other ones and they cost more. They cost money. Um, yeah. I don't even remember where I got light shot from, but mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's a good one. Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing all this. So helpful for me and Janelle. And I know there's other people who haven't started a membership yet who are thinking about it. So I'm sure this is going to help them a lot too. Plus all this instructional design information too, which is useful all the time, everything that we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's my pleasure. And like I said, you know, um, if you need help or something, I am in the community. You can always mm -hmm. tag me and yeah. 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 Thank you so much. I really appreciate sure. it. Anything you want to tell people that's coming up that they might be interested in? Um, I would, I guess, you know, if you're interested in working with me or you, um, I do consult. So I will share the links for that if that's okay. something that you'd like. Um, you know, usually like for instance, I've, you know, I have people who are like, I have this really great idea for a class and I've done it in person, but I don't know how to, you know, think about it in these ways. That's where I can sit with you and, and kind of help you lay out those things and even create like a rough outline or syllabus um, that, helps people, you know, move along, um, yeah. you know, anything's like that. You can always, um, yeah, just reach out to me. Um, the other thing, like I said, you can be a part of our rebels community. We also have transcurricular units, but I think that's more for like people who are doing after school science and, um, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. if you know of teachers that need that, you know, just send them our way. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lisa, so much. 